Chowder Government Operations, the dossier. Let's talk about this. You, you've heard of the dossier out there? Oh my gosh, the golden shower in Moscow. And as disgusting as it gets, if you go through the, all of the facts and the dossier and you boil them down and distill them, which I did ad nauseum, this is what you get. Russian intelligence supplied false information and interfered with the presidential election and uh, Fusion GPS and uh, Mr. Steele, a former British intelligence officer, if there is such a thing, paid senior Russian security officers to provide the information on Donald Trump. They got the information from senior Russian intelligence officers in Moscow. That's kind of collusion there, isn't it? But it was to dig up dirt on Donald Trump, not to eliminate him. So they went to, to Russian intelligence. Now, I was a CIA, CIA officer, and I was up against Russian intelligence, sometimes closely. <laughs> you, can, you think you can trust Russian intelligence to give you honest information when you're their espionage enemy? I mean, duh, you know, that's espionage 101. But that's what they did. Then the CIA, John Brennan, labeled it as intelligence, classified it just out of the blue, and leaked it to the news media. The CIA director leaked the contents of the dossier, calling it intelligence to the news media to make it look like Trump had colluded with the Russians and these prostitutes doing golden showers on Barack Obama's hotel bed or, or uh, such and such. So the CIA labeled it intelligence, leaked it to the news media. Uh, Mockingbird, anyone? Uh, intelligence leaking information to the press against the president? Anybody? Yeah. It was the basis for the FBI getting the warrants to do NSA surveillance on the Trump campaign team. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Powers, the UN ambassador, uh, Susan Powers, I think her first name is Susan, she unmasked 260 names of Americans, uh, Samantha Powers. Samantha Powers used this in the NSA to unmask the identities of 260 Americans. What in the world is the UN ambassador using the NSA to unmask the names of US citizens for? But this is how the FBI got those surveillance warrants was from the dossier information. So the FBI used information from Russian intelligence to get an NSA FISA approval to spy on Donald Trump and his cabinet. I'll just let that sit there for a couple seconds. That's what happened. And we talked about uh, the UN ambassador on mass 260 names. So information used as the basis for the, for the current special prosecutor, once again, the dossier started the ball rolling for the selection of Robert Mueller as the special prosecutor investigating Trump collusion. Remember we talked about Mueller's connection to the, to the deep state shadow government. I, I'm convinced and there's more there with, with Mr. Mueller and Comey for that matter. But uh, the information was used as the basin, basis now for Robert Mueller, the current special prosecutor. Information from Russian intelligence. I, mean, if, I was in counterintelligence in the sea. I'd be rolling over. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if this is happening. I mean, this is, a, this is the top government almost committing espionage with Soviet intelligence. I mean, really, it's that, it's that bad. The FBI even paid this former British spy for information until Christopher Steele's identity was revealed. And then they, they stopped paying and they're like, oh, oh, they pulled the payments back. The FBI was actually paying this guy to connect to the Russians and get this information. Robert Mueller. And the dossier was originally obtained by, guess who? The man that I love so much, the shadow senator, uh, John McCain. Um, he, he sent an emissary over to uh, pick up the dossier from Mr. Steele, brought it back, gave it to the CIA and the FBI, and initiated the investigation, Senator John McCain. And as a former intelligence, I've written a lots of intelligence report from some of the stuff I got, some of the stuff that was coming in. Uh, this thing is, I, I've read it, it's poorly written, there's false information, the grammars, is, there's misspelling, the grammar's even bad in this thing. When you're an intelligence officer and you write a report, you get one word mis misspelled, and they kick your pancake maker all the way down the stairs, just for one error. And this thing looks like it was written by a high school kid almost. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> uh, it's, I think they put it together so quickly they didn't bother to, to write a product because they wanted that sucker out there to get this guy Trump, you know? I mean, really. <clears throat> So here it is. Let me just sum this up. As a foreign intelligence officer, as I sifted through this, this is what I came up with. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Sorry, but I just got to laugh. It's almost funny. They paid Russian intelligence for the information. Then they disseminated, it to, disseminated that information from Russian intelligence to the CIA and the FBI. Then the CIA leaked it to the press from Russian intelligence. Then the FBI used that for their FISA to do the NSA surveillance on Trump's campaign team. Now, this is all facts. You can go out and verify all of this. 
All of it. This is just facts, by fact, by fact. And which eventually led to the special pro prosecutor, Robert Mueller, of 9-11 warrantless wire, wire search lying to Congress four times fame. We could just stop right here and go home and maybe get a Big Mac on the way and then be all be over. <laughs> but that's a, I wish I could say it didn't get worse. Uh, but uh, people need to understand that is a shadow government in my humble, meek and mild view. That's a shadow government operation against a sitting president about as obvious as you can get. Not the Russians trying to get Donald Trump elected, the Russians getting paid to provide information to keep him from being elected. Okay, so what does evil look like in the government? What's the face of evil look like? It's a dark hooded figure hidden away in a smoky room doing nasty things on a computer or a covert operation. What, is, what does the face of evil look like in the creation of the CIA? Mind control experiments on unwitting human subjects with MK Ultra, sex abuse. Uh, drugging Americans and Canadians without their knowledge. I think they were trying to, to do split personalities through sexual abuse and other things and some kinds of torture to see if they could split a, a person's personality, turn them into a, a warrior type. Uh, mind control experiments. Secret enhanced interrogation and murder. Enhanced interrogation. Have we ever heard that lately? This is going on back under, under this guy in the, in the first uh, 10 years of the CIA. Black site detention and rendition. Does that sound familiar? Has that happened recently? Remember, blood on, on the roots, blood on the fruits. Uh, this was done back at, about five to ten years after the, the CIA's creation. Did we just not see this a few years ago? Again? Torture, verbal, sexual abuse. Collaborating with Hitler's Third Reich. Smuggling Nazi war criminals out of Germany. Overthrowing democratically elected governments. Huge assassination programs. Spying on U.S. citizens. Have you seen that lately? Politically motivated intelligence leaks. I think I just showed you one of those. That happened when the CIA was formed. They're doing the same thing. They haven't changed who they are at all. Conspired against the President of the United States. Alan Dulles formed a secret cabal of former high-level CIA officers to try to undermine every policy that JFK was doing. They worked against him at every turn to try to stop him. Um, after JFK was assassinated, guess who they put in charge of the Warren Commission to run it? Alan Dulles, uh, Kennedy's arch enemy, who was arrayed against him, and he coerced the witnesses and in what inf information the CIA provided. I'm just saying. Uh, it's a historical fact. So what, is, what does this person look like, this evil, dark, hooded figure? Someone that would do these horrible things. Well, this is what he looks like. Nice, pipe-smoking, Harvard kind of guy. If you met him at a party, you'd think, hey, you know, that's a real educated, upstanding man. Alan Dulles, the director of the CIA, did all this. He and Richard Helms. So. You can't go by what the person looks like. You got to go by what they what they do, and you got to go by the the character of the organization that uh, they're running. We have been the U.S. has been sleeping with the devil since 1947 and the creation of the CIA, murders, killing, and beyond that the CIA has done with our tax dollars. Our government has been sleeping with the devil since the National Security Act of 1947. We all got this when we got in there. I used to be a briefer. We used to tell people, uh, you know how you got in here in the CIA? You're the cream of the crop. You're the top of the evolutionary chain, intellectual chain. Do you realize that, and I can't say the exact figure, but 300,000 people apply with this agency a year, and only 2% get in. That's you. That means you're smarter than the little people down there. You're special, and their heads swell, and narcissists, which there are a lot of, they love that stuff. Their head just swells way up. You're like James Bond, and you know? You're, that's what you are now. You're James Bond. Well, the only problem with that is... Did James Bond ever do these things? Drone wedding parties. I think, I think the drone program has droned to date eight wedding parties and killed everybody in the wedding party going after the one suspected terrorist. They can now drone wedding parties not based on hard intelligence but just suspected that the person, because of their behavior, only may be involved in terrorism. They can hit him with a drone. Eight wedding par parties have been wiped out. Torture and kill prisoners. James Bond ever do that? Spy on his own government. Did he ever do that? Ma'am? I think her name was Ma'am. Did he ever spy on Ma'am? Or I forget the, his boss's name, a lady. Um, did he ever provide false intelligence leading to war? Pay trained human rights violators? Stage false terrorist attacks? Overthrow de democratically elected governments? Plant false stories in British newspapers? Create and support terrorism? Leak intelligence for political influence? Conspire to destroy the Queen? Did James Bond ever do any, any of these things? CIA, you are no James Bond. Let's just get that straight right now. Did he ever run drugs for money? That's a whole nother hour there. Um, 
it's pretty clear that the CIA got into the DEA and manipulated the, the, the DEA, and the CIA has been involved in drug running for years, Operation Gladio being one of those, with secret budgets. Obstruction of, of justice, remember, violations of the U.S. Constitution are what? A felony, right? I mean, if we're under a, if people under the rule of law, constitutional law, it's a, it's a felony, at least it used to be. Obstruction of justice. Operation Paperclip. The CIA created false files on these Nazi war criminals, made them look like they had no connection to the Third Reich, and then presented them to Truman. Truman read through them and was like, okay, this guy wasn't involved with the Nazis, bring him over. They lied to the president, fabricated the intelligence, got these Nazi war criminals to do scientific experiments, probably MK Ultra related things, inside the United States. MK Files, when it finally went before Congress, what did the CIA do? They destroyed the files before they went to testify. That's why with the release of the JFK files, which never should have been classified in the first place, they should have been public source. But the big controversy about the release of the, J J release of the JFK files, with Trump doing that, I think is, is awesome. But do you think the CIA archived the files of the names of the assassins, if it did or did not use, do you think that they're gonna archive that so it can be retrieved at a later date? I mean, that's laughable. They, did you, they did, in, in MK Ultra, did they say, well, yeah, this is illegal, unconstitutional, human rights violation, but we'll go ahead and start, store these files in archives and in 30 years people can see all the dastardly things we did. <laughs> do you think they did that with JFK? Absolutely not. Uh, that stuff will never see the light of day because it's, it no longer exists. The Warren Commission, the CIA controlled the documents and the witness tampering because they put Alan Dulles, the CIA director, in charge of the Warren Commission. And he decided what CIA officers were going to testify, which ones weren't, and what documents were or were not going to be provided, which were few. Iran-Contra lied to Congress. Congress. The CIA lied to Congress. A felony. Uh, destroyed all their files, all the Iran-Contra files, and were running drugs uh, to support the Contras. All, not just a violation of U.S. law, it's a violation of international law. Obstruction of justice. The torture program. Destroyed all the tapes. Demanded, remember, demanded by the Senate, destroyed all the torture tapes, and then hacked into the computers on, on Senate on Capitol Hill to see what, what kind of goods they had on them. Obstruction of justice to the 10th power. I mean, how much more do you want? Uh, spied on the U.S. Senate, the CIA withheld the JFK documents. I talked about that. They had no right to do that. Uh, you will find out that most of that stuff it has nothing to do with classified operations or sources and methods or anything. That should have been released to the American people from day one, with some exceptions. There may have been a couple of sources, uh, which I strongly doubt. They may have wanted to protect, uh, but I strongly doubt that. One of the things the CIA has done, just so you know, is they uh, got passage of what is called the Covert Identities Protection Act. Now, what the Covert Identities Protection Act does is make it a felony up to 20 years in prison if you reveal the name of any CIA agent who was undercover or is now undercover by accident or intentionally. That's how they got John Kiriakou. He accidentally handed someone a business card not knowing that this guy used to be undercover. Of course, they were, trying, they were waiting for him. And that that's, was their excuse, was that statute. So the CIA can and is, I am sure, because I know them, they're going to say with JFK, well, Covert, Protection, Covert Identities Protection Act, you know, we had covert officers involved back then, and I'm sorry, but the law says we can't reveal any of their names or what they're connected to. Case closed. See how they do it? That's the shadow government. That's the power of secrecy. Okay, more. Abuse of secrecy. Use of unwitting universities. In MK Ultra, they, they had unwitting universities, MIT and others, doing the CIA's mind control experiments, but not knowing they were doing it for the CIA. They thought they were doing noble stuff, and the whole time it was a CIA operation. They lied to the universities and had them conducting these experiments, not even knowing that they were doing it for the CIA, until later. Illegal coups and co covert operations. We talked about, about some of those with Congress. Conceal the activities before the 9-11 attacks and after the 9-11 Commission issued its report for the American people and transparency. Remember, that wasn't that the goal of the figure out what the heck happened? Well, they released it, but there's 28 pages still blacked out. Shadow government favorite. Blacked out 28 pages. Still, George W. Bush had them blacked out. Still blacked out today. 28 pages. That was, that was for the American people. Why are they blacking out 28 pages? I have my own ideas about that. I think Saudi intelligence was connected. Saudi intelligence is a close uh, ally of our intelligence. Um, and why is that blacked out? That's a people's document. When they black something out, you probably should be suspicious. Uh, still blacked out today. 
The CIA invoked the state's secret privilege to cover illegal operations. They've done that multiple times. I'll show you that uh, whenever there's a CIA operation that comes before Congress or somebody files suit because somebody has been killed or in injured, the CIA invokes the state's secret, secret privilege with impunity, shuts the case down, it's sealed from Congress, and it's gone forever. They've, I've seen it used personally. They've used it multiple times. It's the greatest tyranny that's ever happened in our government, my, in my view. They bla blacked out documents. Congress demands things and they provide it, but it's all blacked out. I mean, it's meaningless, but they did their job. They I'll show you some examples. They did their job. They provided it. It's they're obstructing justice. So, General Michael Hayden, director of the NSA and then director of the CIA. <laughs> I'll just shake that one off. Uh, that's double trouble. This is what he said, and you know, I think maybe we ought to take this to heart. Maybe not. We obey the law. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, probably one of the biggest fibs ever told in, in the history of humankind. <laughs> just trust us. Don't look into us. Don't investigate. Just trust us. The National Security Agency is removing deeper into the, into the shadow government. Massive system of global surveillance. Remember the USA Freedom Act? The NSA is not spying on us anymore. Isn't that what they've told us? They're not, they're not hacking into Google and, and Yahoo and Microsoft and the rest of them without them knowing it anymore. No, no. They have to ask permission now. That's at the USA Freedom. I think it was Ron Paul that said, and he's right, <laughs> whenever the U.S. government says they reform something, you need to be suspicious. Because it usually gets worse. <laughs> and that's the case here. Uh, all of the information connected from the NSA domestic surveillance program on us, 1.5 billion bits of information a year, our cell phone use, our computers, our telephones, our texts, our smart TVs, anything digital on us with impunity on all of us was collected. And it was stored in what's called the Utah Data Center. There's so much data there, they had to create a new name called Yodobytes. It is so huge. They went by Giga and Terra and all the rest, and they had nothing left. So they came up with Yodobytes. That's enough bits and bytes to fill the state of Delaware and uh, Rhode Island full of bits and bytes to fill the entire state. That's how much data is in the U Utah Data Center from all the collection on you, me, our neighbors, and everyone else. Huge, massive. They have exclusive authority on mass Americans. We've talked about that. The FISA court is a Supreme Court that secretly allows the, the uh, surveillance of US citizens without the knowledge of Congress. They've got their own secret court, secret Supreme Court. And they've just been given new cybersecurity authority. So if there's any cybersecurity issues with any Americans, they can now spy on you. Is cybersecurity security a huge thing that impacts all of us now? with viruses and Trojan horses and all this other stuff. So if it's a cybersecurity problem, they now can, can get into our stuff. So they just redid the authority under a different name. And I'll show you something else. This is the Black Chamber. The original NSA surveillance office was fine, created fine, uh, trying to gather information on, on our enemies during war. That's, that's perfectly fine, perfectly constitutional. But this is what it's grown to be. It's a global surveillance massive complex, massive. And I'll show you some things they did to, anybody heard of William Binney? NSA whistleblower, I'll talk about him in a little bit. Um, good man. Uh, this is the Utah Data Center in Utah, storing yottabytes of information. This is where all of our information out in Utah in the NSA uh, Data Center is being stored on all of us. The information is so huge, the cooling systems for the computers are the size of a warehouse just to cool the computers down for information on us. Constitutional issue there, maybe? Yeah, maybe. And, of course, they're shielded by the state secrets privilege. Several people took the NSA to court over the NSA domestic spying program, wanted it to go to court under the Fourth Amendment. So what the NSA did was, yeah, sorry, state secrets privilege, case sealed, it's over. Uh, we have that authority. You'll never see it. Gone. Close the cases down. Just like that. They've got that power. So this is what the NSA has done recently. I don't know if you know about this or not. They have... Uh, began a program called Traffic Shaping to get around the, the NSA Freedom, Freedom Act, you, or the USA Freedom Act. You know what Traffic Shaping is? What they're doing is they're all the internet traffic that they're collecting on us, they're not storing it locally. The old stuff is still on the Utah Data Center forever, but the new stuff, they're not storing it in the United States anymore. They're storing it overseas. They're still collecting it on us, but they're storing it in overseas databases. It's called Traffic Shaping. Kind of a serpent-like term, but they're shaping the traffic still collecting, but they're sending it overseas and still storing it. Arsenal of surveillance programs, Lockheed Martin and other military industrial complexes are doing that on their behalf for multi-billion dollar contracts. And now they are starting to use the new voice print uh, technology, what is it, Alexa and the other things, 
and your cell phone, the NSA is now able to pick up your voice when you're talking, not just from your cell phone, from other things. And now on the database, they have your voice, not just your data. This is an NSA dream come true. Uh, voice print technology, they've got our voices now, not just our data. Uh, chilling. We're, we're not just surveilled by the government now, we're surveilled by our own corporations that have multi-million dollar contracts with the government and are bound by secrecy oaths and can never talk about what they did. Even if they feel guilty after they retire, mm -mm. Think they want to go to prison? Risk their life, their finances? No, of course not. Nobody, no one's going to talk. It's personal destruction. Corporate tracking and browsing, even Facebook and everybody else. On top of all of this, the NSA is gathering the information that Facebook and the other companies are collecting on what we buy, purchase, and all of, the, all of those trends. Uh, Amazon, for example, and their, their uh, contract with the CIA to monitor the cloud. That's what, the, that's what Amazon and the CIA are doing with that contract, is monitoring the cloud. So the corporations are even handing over our behavioral information from what we buy to the CIA and the NSA. I mean, they're like, we're done as far as privacy goes. They're turning up the police into the extension of the, of the NSA. NSA has been caught disseminating domestic surveillance information to uh, state police and, and the DEA, which is illegal, so that they can go out and, and uh, this guy with license plates such and such, he's got a bag of coke in his back seat, came from the NSA to the police. That ought to make the hair on the back, uh, back of your neck stand up. So they've been doing that. All global electronic traffic is what the NSA has access to. That's why our allies are so mad at us, is that we're, we're picking up their stuff, from, also from their leaders. Now, everybody spies on everybody else. I know coming from that world, friends spy on friends, enemies spy on friends, everybody spies on everybody. Uh, but when you take it to an extreme like this, uh, it starts getting out of hand. And uh, it has not made us real popular, even with, even with our allies. All right, <clears throat> shift gears a little bit. Remember I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve, and we'll keep moving because uh, this, is, this is being taped. I talked about the creation of the Federal Reserve. Now, we all hear about that. Uh, Rand Paul, and I'm, I'm a big fan of Rand Paul, by the way. I think he's probably one of the only constitutional senators left. Some guy just attacked him, I guess broke five of his ribs or something. Uh, strange, but uh, Rand Paul is, and, his, and his dad, Ron, have been calling this for years, and they've trying to make, they're trying to make Ron Paul look like your crazy old grandpa from the attic because he's, he's been after uh, the Federal Reserve since for his entire career. He's never changed. The Federal Reserve, I want you to understand what the Federal Reserve is. And you'll never look at the Federal Reserve the same again. Uh, it is the engine of the deep state. You could call it an economic shadow government easily because it runs our economic government. And it's international, no doubt. It was started by a secret society of elite bankers I mentioned, a globalism through the CFR, primarily the House of Morgan connected to the House of Rothschild with a lot of very deep occult connections and occult societies and occult practices. Um, just, a, just a fact. Uh, global economy, the CFR, along with the Federal Reserve, the goal it was and still is a global economy. They want a global economy. A world order economy. You can call it the new world order if you want. You can call it the international order if you want. But they do have now a global world economy that's being run through the Federal Reserve and is controlling our economy right now. And that's been going on since 1913. World's leading international banks. Morgan, Rockefeller, Rothschild, War Warburg are behind our Federal, our Federal Reserve. They're behind that. Their banks are behind that. There, there are 15 branches of the Federal Reserve, and each branch is an international bank outside the United States that is controlling the U.S. economy. Complete control over our economy and freedom. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is appointed by the president, but it's meaningless because it's not a federal agency. But it makes it look legitimate like it is a federal agency. The chairman of the Federal Reserve is a figurehead appointed to make it look like it's legitimate. The real head of... The Federal Reserve is the director in New York that does this in secret behind the scenes. Janet Yellen and, and others that are the figureheads are not the ones that run the show. It's the director in New York who really does it in secret. It is not a government agency. The Federal Reserve is not a branch of the federal government. It is a private bank, internationally connected private bank. Twelve branches, directors from international banks, I mentioned that. There are no reserves in the Federal Reserve. There's, not, there's no reserves in there. This is, this is money laundering coming from international banks into the U.S. economy. So it's not even a reserve. It's a fake name. 
Uh, these international bankers have no loyalty to the U.S., the U.S. sovereignty or the government or anything else. They have loyalty to their national banks, to their country, and yet they're printing our money. They're loaning, they're loaning loans to our major corporations or holding those loans back so the corporations go down. These are federal banks doing, or international banks doing this to our federal government. Deliberates in secret. What did I say about secret before, secrecy before? This is the shadow government economic system. Their deliberations are in secret. Their members are in secret. Their budget decisions are in secret. They cannot be audited because all, all of their accounting is secret. What happens when things are secret? Something, something's, something's wrong with that picture. They can't even be honored. Con Congress has no access to what the Federal Reserve is doing. None. And no oversight whatsoever. And never has since 1913. They have total control over the U.S. economy. Now just think about that. A private secret bank that does everything in secret that is run by international banks has full control over our, our economy. Full control. They have the power to manufacture currency, quantitative easing. You remember that? Just printing money like, like uh, Monopoly money just out of the blue with nothing to back it up, a.k.a. $20 trillion in debt. They can manipulate interest rates on all of our loans, house, car, student loans, and everything else. The Federal Reserve can manipulate those any way they want, and it's not a U.S. government agency. Decides the entire economic condition of the United States. Unilaterally determines the value of the dollar. The, the Federal Reserve, if, if it wanted to, could crash our economy just by simply devaluing the dollar. And it has the unilateral, it is solely can do that all by itself. Adjust the value of the dollar up and down, which would do whatever it wants to the U.S. economy globally. It's responsible for the creation and, uh, and elimination of corporations. It can lend money to a corporation or it can withhold money from a U.S. corporation, either create it or destroy it. And it's not a U.S. organization. Eliminates the freedom of the United States through financial control. Controls our purchases of our houses, our cars, our employment, our investments, our 401ks, the interest on our 401ks, and everything else is controlled by the Federal Reserve, a non-U.S. entity. It's insane. So who's, our, who's the constitutional authority, or at least should be, not, not over the Federal Reserve, but who, who, who is the, the people's voice in Washington? Who's the, the authority, the constitutional authority in Washington? It's Congress, isn't it? It's our voice. It was set up so the people have control over Washington, D.C. through the Congress. So if you're the shadow government or the deep state and you want to control America, who are you going to go after? Who do you want to control the most? Congress. President's secondary as far as they're concerned. That's a seat that's filled every 48 years. They have, they have, they have an easy way of manipulating that, at least until now. <laughs> Congress. This is what the, what the Constitution says. Represents the people. It is our sole constitutional representative. Creates laws and legislation, right? Controls the entire budget, has the, the budget power of the United States, the, the power of the purse, they call it. They can, they can create or stop a federal agency by defunding it, supposedly, except for one. Guess which one that is, the CIA. They cannot control the CIA's budget, although they control everybody else. That is their constitutional authority. They have oversight of federal agencies, except for one that hides everything. No control over that. But that's constitutionally, that's the authority that they're supposed to have. They're supposed to help us, the con constituents, so they, they'll promise us we're going to make your economic situation better, we're going to create more jobs, and then they go to Washington and, and what happens? They change, right? With some good exceptions, a few, they change. They're supposed to educate the public constitutionally. That's one of their roles. They're supposed to educate us on government and what the government is doing. Now, there's a large part of the government that they can't educate us on, isn't there? It's called the shadow government. Um, it's one of the reasons your meek and humble correspondent is standing up here tonight is, is, to, tr is to try to do that, okay? So, Congress is the people's only voice. So Congress has the legal authority to control the CIA through its budget, the constitutional authority, right? It's got that, except for one thing. The CIA classifies and withholds all the documents necessary for Congress to do that. Paralyzes it completely. It is a rogue, out of control, unconstitutional, massive agency that Congress cannot control and was created without Congress. It's unconstitutional, flat out. It's so why we have the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, and they provide oversight to the CIA, so we do have oversight. I was in there, and I know of accounts of entire closets filled with documents 
from the intelligence community that the oversight committees were supposed to be investigating that hadn't been touched for years, just thrown in the closet and piled up. Oversight committees are made up typically of four to five interns who have no experience in intelligence whatsoever, and I think they rotate out on the average every six months before they bring a new one in with no experience whatsoever. And the oversight people on the oversight committees, they are not appointed to the intelligence committees because they have an intelligence background experience. Did you know that? They're appointed by their ability to raise contributions for their party, Republican or Democrat. They get the seat based on that only, not on any intelligence background. I think the House Ways and Means Committee, I think they have to pay $100,000 to get a seat on that committee. They're, they're appointed by paying a fee to sit there. Yeah, that's how corrupt it's gotten. So uh, if you were a congressman or a senator, would you dig way down into the CIA uh, at the expense of your entire career, certainly your reelection, and perhaps even your personal life? Heck no. You think they're going to do that? No, no way. No, it's not going to happen. Not if they want to survive. The lobbyists, the MIC lobbyists uh, control Congress and senators. I think we, we proved that one. There's a revolving door from the Congress to the military industrial complex. If you play the game right with the military industrial complex and you legislate in their favor, Mr. and Mrs. Congressman, when you leave office uh, after about a year, we'll bring you over on our board and you'll make a few million bucks a year, uh, a.k.a. enter James Comey. James Comey left government service, went with Lockheed Martin. Guess how much he was making a year? Six million dollars a year. That's what they paid him. And then he rotates back in and clears Hillary Clinton of uh, espionage. Um, uh, so can you see how the things work? Sadly, Congress is now composed of statesmen. We don't have constitutional representatives, with a couple of exceptions. My humble opinion, maybe Rand Paul. Generally, Congress is composed not of constitutionalists, but statesmen and stateswomen. They have no intention of changing anything in Washington. They're careerists. They want to get reelected. They want to make speeches. Uh, and they want to stay in office as long as they can. They are not going to make any changes. They're not. They are statesmen. They are not constitutionalists. I mentioned this, and, and let me do a little sideline here. When I wrote my book, Sweetheart is 20, 2012, I think is when it came out. Uh, I decided to take quite a bit of risk because I had seen this uh, to an extreme and come out and write from the Company of Shadows. And decided, okay, I'm going to go uh, to the press and I'm going to say we've got a constitutional problem here. Uh, there's, this shadow government is controlling Congress. So I called the Washington Post up, talked to the reporter. Oh my gosh, what a story. Duh. What a story. I'll, I'll, I'll get right back to you. Washington Post, and I think it, it was his editor, I think more than him. I don't, I don't want to down him too much. I know who his editor was, but the Post took my story and went straight to the CIA and reported it. Reported everything that I told him, and then sat on it for a month, going back and forth and, and just lying, calling back and saying, well, exactly what was that classified operation that you were involved in back then? I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, dude? You're, trying to, you're either trying to trap me or you're trying, you know, and it became pretty obvious over about 30 days. So I called the New York Times and they had the story out the next morning. And, and it, you can see it was the front page of the New York Times and the Washington Post published one on the front page. And it's just, just a fragment of what happened. But the point is, they went, the, the Post went directly to the CIA and reported. And the Post is still doing that sort of thing. Uh, Operation Mockingbird. Matrix of Influence. CIA Operation Mockingbird, they pay, paid journalists, ended in 1976. Remember I mentioned that? It is now a voluntary program, and this is how they do it. The CIA runs what you call a quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back, and that's the way the system works. Well, what the CIA does with the Post, New York Times, and others, and says, oh, I know, because I've seen this. All right, I'll tell you what, we'll give you uh, uh, sources, and whenever they, an anonymous source, whenever it's, it's the CIA. So New York Times says anonymous source, you know it came from the CIA, automatically. So we'll, we'll give you this information about uh, Syria. You can publish that as long as you publish no nothing negative about the CIA, because as soon as you do, we cut off the spigot. And they're like, OK, all right, you just keep giving us information, we'll sell papers, and that's how they're doing it. That's how the CIA is manipulating the press. No doubt about it. I've seen it personally. The Pentagon had, had uh, the uh, journalists got a Pulitzer Prize for this. The Pentagon had a mockingbird program where they were paying, I know a couple of them, they were paying generals to go out on, in the news media and try to make it look like the war in Iraq was uh, valid. And it was, it was a whole disinformation propaganda campaign that this journalist uncovered, got a Pulitzer Prize, and it was a Pentagon Mockingbird operation. There are six corporations we now know that own gen most of the media, and I'll show you here in a little bit that those corporations, the editors are tied in with the CIA and they have a, they have a relationship going on still today, now. 
And uh, uh, a lot of globalist funding from George Soros especially is going into papers and they're, and, and they're funding a lot of these papers and how do you think that's going to influence their reporting. And of course, the journalists down at the bottom, do you think that they're going to go against their editor who's talking directly with the CIA in this case uh, and, and risk complete abject destruction of their career? No, of course not. They're not going to do it. With, with, with uh, I think one, one lady just came out recently, um, Cheryl Atkinson wrote a book, which I recommend you read, had the, the guts, bless her heart, to come out and wrote a book right on, man. They even, they even hacked into her computer, been there, and, and I think she got them. So awesome. So there are good people out there. Editors have an unwritten agreement with the CIA today. It's going on today. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in my case. It's happened in multiple cases. The CIA's management network is connected to the major news outlets. That's why you will not see anyone, and I have to include every network in this, CNN, CBS, ABC, and Fox News. You will not hear them dig down into anything with the CIA, will you? No offense to, to Bill O'Reilly at all, but I don't think in, in 12 years I heard him say one thing negative about the CIA ever, him or some of the or co other correspondents. I'm not pounding on Bill. This relationship is there. They are not going to dig. Because to do so, uh, it's going to be at the expense of their paper. This is, uh, I'd, rec I'd highly recommend you read Douglas Valentine's book. I don't, I'm not getting anything personal out of this. It's just a good book. It's called The CIA and Organized Crime. <laughs> read it sitting down. <laughs> I've read it. I can tell you he nails it. This is a quote from, from Douglas Valentine. This network of co cooperation pressures, uh, press the CIA exerts on the media equals political warfare against the American public. Absolutely true. The CIA, going all the way back to the CFR, is manipulating our national news media. And you wonder why they're not reporting on bad things they're doing in Syria. The massacring of the Christian village. The sarin gas attack that the Free Syrian Army did in Syria. Everybody wonders, why aren't they reporting on that? Well, this is why. Now you know. I re read the book. It's awesome. Uh, he also calls it a CIA domestic counter subversion operation that's going on today, and he is right. That's why everybody has a gut feeling that they are not being told the full story by the mainstream media, because they're not. And then we have organizations that are actually getting the story and the truth out there, and those are, those are the, I think we have one sitting right here, those are the heroes of today that are, that are taking the risk of doing the digging to get the information to the people. Thank God for the internet, uh, maybe the last bastion of freedom of the press, the credible ones. The, you know, you got to make sure, triple verify that they're credible, but they're out there. Okay, the CIA has its own public relations office. What do you think their job is? To go to Hollywood and to go to the press and make sure that they're only reporting favorably on what the CIA is doing. Maybe, remember the movie Argo, getting the hostages out of Iran? It was a crock. It was all propaganda. It was, it, that, that didn't happen that way. Just made the CIA look really tough. The CIA actually consulted on that film, and it's a it good film, very good film. Good acting, but it's baloney. Um, Zero Dark Thirty, uh, the CIA had a hand in that one, and I think they actually uh, gave them some classified information in that movie to try to make the CIA look really good. So they have a public affairs office that actually does that. It's connected to Hollywood to make sure that they make movies uh, the right way. Media blackout of criminal behavior, you, you do, and I've said this a few times, I'll say it again, you do not see the CIA, excuse me, you do not see the mainstream media reporting on some of these dark CIA operations. It's absent, isn't it? It's not there. You've got this unconstitutional dark organization that's engaging in violations of the Constitution and the press will not report on it at all? I mean, it, something's going on, and I think, I think we know what that is. Uh, it's crazy. The media is the fourth branch of government. They're supposed to be telling us the truth and what is going, but they're not. I mean, they're bought, sold, and paid for. We also know now that these editors are taking money from billionaires who have direct uh, connections to CIA-linked think tanks and, and uh, funding organizations. So billions of dollars indirectly is going through the CIA into the national news media uh, and, and uh, to the assistance of some of these editors. Mockingbird is alive. I mentioned my book, From the Company of Shadows, thinking that uh, the press would a was actually going to be interested in a story about CIA corruption. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> See, I didn't know all this back then. This caused me, that caused me to start digging and find this stuff out. Uh, uh, that's why you don't see whistleblowers coming out. And I'll show you more here in a moment. That's why whistleblowers don't come out. The press is gone. There is a, there is a, a, a 
perfected system of personal destruction where they will take you out if you try it. But sadly, the news media is compliant. So the national media is compliant with CIA censor and propaganda today. Is, is that chilling? Big time. So the, the, the popular thing out there now as well, you know, the, this deep state, these are Obama holdovers from the Obama administration, John Brennan and others that are leaking information to the press. They're holdovers from Obama, and they're not part of the rest of the government. Uh, that's a sham. Brennan goes all the way back as chief of station in Saudi Arabia under the Bush, Clinton, and both Bush administrations. He's been a shadow government operative for over almost 30 years. He's not an Obama plant. We need to understand that this is not a partisan Republican or Democrat issue. This is a constitutional issue. For example, Clinton uh, and the Bush senior uh, were engaged in the Iran-Contra affair, affair the, the destruction of, of evidence, illegal provision of arms to Iran, and running drug money. Okay, that is a Democrat and a Republican. And you notice how they're all buddy-buddy now? They're hugging each other and loving on each other. It's because they got the goods on each other. They know exactly what they did back then. And even though they're supposed to be arch enemies, they're best buds, man. George W. Bush, Iraq, NSA surveillance, torture, secret prison, prisons, warrantless wide tapping. Barack Obama prosecuted more leakers than any other president in history, including John, my friend John Kiry Kiryakow, prosecuted by Barack Obama. Uh, he expanded the NSA surveillance program and allowed all 17 intelligence agencies to have access to NSA surveillance results. I think he did that his uh, second week before he left, left office. Massively expanded the NSA surveillance powers. It's a democratic administration. And of course, Syria, pre Syrian army, and eventually uh, popped into ISIS. Hillary Clinton. Saudi Arabia ran guns in through, into Benghazi through Saudi Arabia and Qatar as a cutout in a secret operation to arm the Free Syrian Army. Democrat, not a Republican, not an Obama. Uh, uh, she was doing that as Secretary of the State. Uh, she was directly connected to Wall Street and the military industrial complex. We're finding out now. She's making 500,000 bucks a speech, I think, to them. She was working under the Obama administration, a Democratic administration. She uh, was running guns, secretly running guns. Remember Iran-Contra under Republican in administration? Now we're doing it under a Democratic administration. Same old, same old. Congress, Republicans and Democrats, they promise their voters one thing, and what do they do when they get to Congress? They support shadow government, deep state wars, secret operations, and approval of government surveillance. Do you know that Congress was aware of the NSA domestic surveillance program? The Gang of Eight approved it. Congress is aware of the Free Syrian Army. Many of them approve. This is Congress, our representatives, Democrats and Republicans. Shadow government is, has, doesn't care about political parties at all. Not at all. It's pan-administration, pan-party. So uh, let's look at control of congressional hearings, constitutional violations. And, and again, getting back to what I said in the beginning, a violation of the Constitution is what? It's a felony, right? So I want to go through some of the, the, the constitutional violations that the U.S. government has done down through the years up until now. Constitutional violations by the shadow government, a.k.a. the U.S. government. Control of congressional hearings, withholding documents and testimony, blocking Congress from covert programs, classifying and concealing illegal operations, running drugs to pay for these things, establishing covert funding from illegal activity, Operation Gladio, surveillance of the Congress and the Senate, if we could imagine that. The NSA surveilled Congress and its discussions with Israel, actually tapped into their phone calls on Capitol Hill. Control of the judiciary, the FISA court and the state secrets privilege, use of our tax dollars with no approval, surveillance of the U.S. citizens, violation of the Fourth Amendment, all constitutional violations, all felonies. Officials lying under oath, the DNI, the CIA, NSA, all those officials have lied to Congress under oath, and I've got examples of every single one of those. Secret operations involving human rights violations, Augusto Pinochet and the death squads, MK Ultra, the dragging of U.S. citizens without their knowledge, on and on it goes. Silencing whistleblowers. Uh, most people don't know that if you work for the intelligence, uh, any intelligence organization, when you sign the, the form for employment, you give up your constitutional right to trial. Now, those of you listening to me now that are working in the intelligence committee, you probably didn't know that, did you? You have no right to trial. You don't know that, but you sign that away when you join up. So if you think you're going to take uh, the NSA, the CIA, to trial with your constitutional rights, not going to happen. You gave those rights up without you knowing it. Secret prisons, rendition, torture, the NDA, indefinite detention of Americans. Everybody knows about that. If the government, if there's a national state of emergency, they can round up anybody they want with no habeas corpus, no probable cause, no trial, lock them up, deny access to an attorney, their family, or anyone else. They have that authority right now. And I don't know if you know it, 
based on the war on terror, uh, an intentional choice of words, we are still in a continual state of emergency after 9-11, which based on continuity of government, they can suspend the Constitution at any time right now. Because they have, and uh, Obama extended it and Trump is working on it. We'll see if the, if the shadow government gets to him or not. But if they extend that, they can suspend the Constitution in the war on terrorism at any time. As it stands right now, they can do that. National security letters with the FBI under Robert Mueller can go into your employment if they decide that you're a terrorist. Now, their definition of terrorist, if you, if you examine it, includes uh, Greenpeace, the NRA, and other groups that they consider possibly uh, um, subversive by their own definition. So their definition of terrorist includes maybe some of us in this room here, depending on whether you're a Greenpeace member or NRA member. That's their definition of terrorism. Very, very broad. So they can walk into your place of employment with national security letters, and they can go to your supervisor, and they can say, FBI, National Security Letter, we want, it. we want you to give us all of the employment information, financial information on uh, Betty Jordan, all the files, hand them over to us, and if you tell Betty we were here, you're going to jail, you're going to prison. There's a statute that after 9-11 that says they can come into your place of business, access all your files, and if your coworkers or supervisors tell you, they will arrest them and take your supervisor to prison under the National Security Letters. Then, of course, you have the warrantless searches. They can break into an American's house without probable cause, violation of the Fourth Amendment, search through all your records and files, and leave without you knowing it. Biggest violation of the Fourth Amendment in U.S. history. Robert Mueller, special prosecutor, oversaw these programs. Drone assassination program, there's a presidential kill list. On the average, there's 100 people on that list, and they, they have meetings where the president goes down and goes, uh, that one and they'll pick which, which person they're going to drone next. Problem with that is collateral damage. They just killed 34 innocent people, I think, last week. Uh, there was a military strike, uh, so they will, pick, they will pick a target based on behavior now, and they will take out that target and anybody around that target. No wonder, no wonder the world's mad at us. 9-11, uh, as I mentioned, we are in a continual state of emergency to cut through continuity of government. They can suspend our Constitution and engage in indefinite uh, detention if, if uh, if they think it gets to that point. Constitutional violations, huge. So what is, how does a shadow government do it? And, well, what they do is they reward the faithful. See, if you stay faithful and you don't rock the boat at all, then they'll reward you for doing this. This is George W. Bush awarding George Tenet the Presidential Medal of Freedom after George Tenet did this, provide falsified intelligence leading to the Iraq War, biggest military, military mistake in US history, being taught that way at the war colleges. Gives them a medal. Tenet also withheld critical information prior to and after the 9-11 attack and obstructed justice. He, he engaged in and manages and supervised the torture, rendition, and secret prison program. George Tenet did that. And he invoked the state's secret privilege to seal cases against the CIA more than any other CIA director in history. So does he get in trouble for it? Is he indicted for it? Maybe not appointed to another position? No, he's rewarded. Guess who his chief of staff was while he was doing all of this? None other than John Brennan, who was later rewarded as, guess what? The director of the CIA, who continued the torture program, the drone program. He spied on the Senate and invoked the state secret privilege. See how it works? That chain just keeps going on and on. No one ever gets indicted or arrested. You see these wonderful congressional hearings with Trey Gowdy, who's an awesome orator, and uh, Jason Chavitz, when he was there, pounding on these people, suitable for framing what they were saying. But did anything happen? No, nothing. They presented a beautiful case, and then nothing happens. It's the way it works. Lying under oath before Congress. Let me give you some examples. Lying under oath before Congress. These are government officials lying under oath and getting away with it, not even being charged with anything. James Clapper denied the domestic surveillance program. Remember that film? Uh, and, and it was Ron Wyden who just was just cooking him like a piece of bacon. Uh, no, I'm asking you, uh, how has the NSA spied on U.S. citizens? And, and Clapper, I, I'm a behavior now, so my master's degree is in forensic psychophysiology. That's a big word for detection of deception. <laughs> and uh, the director of national intelligence was not aware of his body language at all. I don't know if you've seen the tape, but are you spying on American citizens? <laughs> uh, no. I'm asking you again. That's because all the nerves in your face are firing. I'm asking you again, are you spying on American citizens? Oh, not wittingly, he says. <laughs> Lies under oath. 
and does a terrible job of it. He's not even good at it. <laughs> John, uh, John Brennan uh, denied, no, we didn't spy on the Senate. No, no, we never did that until they caught him. Oh, yes, you did. We got the, the IP address trail right here. It was you. Well, oh, okay, I guess we did. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, he says. General Keith Alexander, uh, General Alexander, director of the NSA, um, you, you've been spying on the American people um, to a huge extent. How many terrorist attacks have you stopped through that surveillance? Well, 50, at least 50 times. Congress being, I think it was Ron Wyden again, I think, being smart. Okay, go back and get us those cases and come back. We'll reconvene and I want you to show us those 50 cases. He comes back. Well, we couldn't find them. What do you mean you couldn't find them? Well, they're kind of hard to track down. Um, okay, well, how many cases did you find? Uh, maybe uh, one, uh, there was about four. Okay, go back and get those four and bring them back to us. And comes back and goes, well, uh, couldn't really find those either. Uh, uh, okay, uh, but you missed the Boston bombing, didn't you? Well, well I guess so, yeah. So uh, they could not provide one case where the NSA domestic surveillance program had caught a terrorist attack. Not one. And yet he said originally they were 50 until they caught him under oath. FBI Director Robert Mueller denied using extensive warrantless searches. Uh, and this is, you've got to watch this one. Director Mueller, how many times has the FBI entered an American's house illegally? Oh, uh, to my knowledge, I think there's, uh, I think he said 47 times in terrorist investigations. Okay, well, let's reconvene. And some really smart congressional staffer went out there and did some digging, probably talked to some FBI agents, came back and said, uh, okay, let's ask you that question again, uh, Mr. Mueller, because we got evidence here that you did it 2,000 times. Okay, 2,000 times, he says. Uh, 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry I lied under oath, but 2,000 times. Okay, I'll go with that. So they go out and they do some more digging, and, and they found out it was at least 4,000 times they'd broken into people's houses. So they get him back on the hot seat. You've got to watch this. And, and he's like, uh, okay, uh, Director Mueller, you said 2,000 times. Yeah, that's right, 2,000. Well, we, we have evidence that it's actually at least 4,000. Oh, okay, well, that's probably more accurate. It's probably, probably 4,000. So they said, uh, uh, Director Mueller, tell us, please exactly how many times the NSA has entered an American's home without a warrant. And if you can believe it, what he said was, uh, I don't really remember. And they let it go. Yeah, I mean, you gotta watch it. You, you stop the tape and it's like, what? Uh, and and they, just, they just dropped it. You, you're the FBI director, you're breaking into an American's house without a warrant, and you don't remember how many times you did it. Uh, that's called lying, maybe, under oath. Anyway, I mean, it gets ridiculous, but they get away with it. Why? Because of the system. Secretary of, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton denied the orders to reduce Benghazi's security, amongst other things, said she did not do that. She did not sign off on that until they found an affidavit demanding security be re reduced with her signature on it. Uh, she did do it. Lied under oath. Anything happened to her? Perjury? Charges? Anything? No. No. And this is not a partisan thing. This is a shadow government thing. They get away with it. Attorney General Eric Holder caught spying on American journalists, spying on reporters. They, and he was actually held in contempt of Congress. So, Attorney General, did you spy on James Rosen and did you spy on these other 100 uh, AP journalists? No, I never, no, I never, I'd never sign off on anything like that. Oh yeah, what about this affidavit with your signature on the bottom approving that to happen? I'm not talking any further. And they cited him with con contempt of Congress. Lied like a chihuahua under oath and, and with no repercussions at all. Uh, incredible. But the shadow government protects its own. So uh, Dana Priest and, and William Arkin did an incredible stu stu uh, uh, study in their book. I think it's called Top Secret Amer America. They said this, the top secret world of the government created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 has become so large, so unwieldy, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exact how many agencies do the same work. Not even Congress knows the size and extent of the shadow government because it's created outside of Congress, obviously. They, they have no idea what, what this thing is doing. It's a separate secret government that operates outside the Constitution and that should cause everybody to pause right there. Secret government that operates outside the Constitution. Have we created a monster? We didn't create it, but we let it be created. Have they created a monster? Yeah, it is a raving, massive monster.